This is the Roots and Rational Exponents tutorial. Let's begin by discussing a common square root. Here I've drawn in the square root of 36. Now there's some mathematical terms that you should know about roots. The first is the radical sign. This is just what you're used to seeing as the square root, this radical sign right here. Next would be the index. The index refers to the degree of the root, and it's written right inside here, this little nook on the radical sign. Now, on a square root, you don't actually write in the index. It's just assumed to be a 2, but you don't actually write that in. The radicand is the number underneath the radical sign, so the number that you're taking the root of. So in this case, the radicand is 36. Just for a refresher, let's go ahead and practice one or two roots. We're going to break down the typical square root using prime factorization. Now you could start with something simple like this, like the square root of 36 that we have given. We know it's a square root because I haven't indicated anything in the index, which means it's an unassumed 2. Now you know that the square root of 36 is going to be 6. If you didn't know your tables like that, your perfect square tables, you could have just broken this down using prime factorization. You could have said that 36 breaks down into a couple prime numbers. We could break it down into 2 times 18, and 18 could be broken down into 3 times 6, like so. And 6 could even be broken down into 2 and 3. Now, because the index of this root is 2, for every 2 of the same number underneath the radical, you would pull one of them out from under the radical. So for example, we have one 2 here and another 2 there. So we have one pair of 2's. We have two of them. So one 2 is going to come outside of the radical. And we also have two 3's. So that means one of those 3's gets to come outside the radical. And we have nothing left under the radical because we already got rid of all the, the numbers that it broke down into. So that's going to disappear. So for our answer we have 2 times 3, which is 6 just like you already knew. Now let's try something that's a bit more difficult. Why don't we try the square root of 68? Well, since we know it's a square root, the index is 2 even though it's not written, which means we can only pull things out from under the radical that come in pairs of 2's. So let's break it down using prime factorization. I'll start with 2. 64 breaks down, or excuse me, 68 breaks down into 2 times 34. And 34 will break down into 2 times 17. Now we call it prime factorization because you go until you only have prime numbers remaining. And in this case, we have 2's and 17's, both of which are prime numbers. Now you'll notice that we have a pair of 2's. So I can pull one 2 out from underneath the radical. However, we have only one 17 remaining. So the 17 is going to stay behind underneath the radical. And the square root of 68 is 2 radical 17. Now that's enough for a refresher on roots. Let's go ahead and talk some more about rational exponents. Let's begin with the definition of what a rational exponent is. The following expressions can be used if the nth root of x is a real number and y is an integer. So for the moment, I just want you to consider the expression that's been given down below here. This is essentially turning those words up top into an actual algebraic expression. Here we have x, and we know that x must be a real number when we're dealing with rational exponents. And y just has to be an integer. z can be anything, really. So you can see that if you took x and raised it to the y over z, the z in that situation, so the denominator here, would actually become the index of the root. The x would be the radicand, so the number beneath the root, and the y is the exponent that the radicand is being raised to, so the numerator of the fraction is now here. The exponent that the radicand, x, is being raised to. And also, if you had x just to the 1 divided by y, 
that would simply just be the y root of x. So again, the denominator y here is becoming the index of this root and anything to the one power is itself. So there's no need to write x raised to the one. You can just simply write x as the radicand beneath. So why don't we take a look at a couple of examples here and we'll work them out together. Let's begin with 11 to the 3 halves power. Now compare that to our example here. 11 in this case is the x, the numerator y would be 3, and the denominator of the fraction would be 2, or z, as in the example. So we could set that equal to this root, where the index of the root was the denominator of the fraction that the number there, 11, was being raised to. So the denominator here, 2, becomes our index. We're taking the square root. 11 is the radicand underneath, and the 3, the numerator here of this fraction, is actually going to be the power that 11 was raised to. So this work should be done typically using a calculator. Let's go ahead and simplify this guy down below. What I want to do is take the square root of 11 cubed. So if you were to put this into your calculator, you'd have the square root of 11 cubed, which is 1331. Now notice I didn't write the 2 there in the index again, because we don't need to with the square root. Any other number, yes, but with the square root, it's special we don't write it in. You know that. So the square root of 1331 isn't a terribly pretty number. It's actually 36.48, roughly. So that would be how to take an 11 to 3 halves, so to an odd exponent there, a fractional exponent. Now the square root of 25 is just like we did in our previous practice problem. You already know it because you know your perfect squares. 25 is the perfect square of 5, so if you were going to break this down using prime factorization, it would break down into two prime numbers, 5 and 5. Since there's a pair of 5s, and 2 is the unofficial radicand, or excuse me, index of this radical, the square root of 25 is just going to be 5. Now let's go ahead and learn how to rewrite things using rational exponents. So we're going to rewrite rational exponents based on the rules that we saw on the previous slide. So recall that x to the y over z can be rewritten as the z root of x to the y. So the fifth root of 125, 125 here we could, be, we could say is being raised to the first power. And that would be the position of y if you were to look directly above it here. The exponent that the radicand is being raised to. So translate that y to the left side of the equal sign here. The radicand, 125, is actually going to be raised to the y over z. y, we know, is 1 here. It's the exponent that the 125 is being raised to right there. And the index here of the root is actually the denominator here. So that would be 5. Now all of that is being cubed. So this is really 125 to the 1 -fifth power cubed. So you could rewrite it like that if you'd like. We've gotten rid of the radical sign there. Let's take a look at the fourth root of 64. Now there's a couple ways to write this. You could say that it's 64 to the first power. So we could rewrite it here as 64 raised to the 1 divided by the index. So the exponent that the radicand was raised to, 1, divided by the index of the radical, 1 fourth. Or you could also use prime factorization. You have the fourth root of 64, which means we need 4 of one number to be able to pull it out from under the radical. So 64 breaks down to 2 and 32. 32 breaks down into 2 and 16. 16 breaks down into 2 and 8. 8 breaks down into 2 and 4. And 4 breaks down into 2 and 2. So for every 4 of one number, I can pull one of them out. So here are four twos. So I'll bring one of them out. 
but there are two twos left behind down here, which means I can't pull them out of the radical. So it's still the fourth root of two times two, which is four. So that's another way to rewrite this answer using simplification. You could rewrite it as 64 to the 1 fourth power, or 2 fourth root of 4. Now we've got the cubed root of negative 127. Well, here's the rule for dealing with negatives under the radical. If you happen to have an odd integer for your index, and a negative underneath your radical, then your answer is going to be negative. So we know that we're going to be dealing with a negative answer. And the cube root of 27, if you break that down using prime factorization, you'll find that that would be 3, because 3 cubed is 27, and the cube root of 27 is 3. So our answer in this case is negative 3. Now, had that been an even integer for the index, our answer would have been positive. So let's take a look at this last problem, x cubed minus 6 is equal to 58. Well, we want to get that exponent alone, so the first thing I'm going to do to this problem is add 6 to both sides. And we're going to have x cubed is equal to 58 plus 6, which is 64. Now we want to solve for x, so I'm going to take the cubed root of x cubed. The cubed root and the cube are going to cancel out, and we're going to have x remaining. And now we have the cubed root of 64. Now you know that that's 64 to the 1 power. And using our rules right here, we can rewrite that as x is equal to 64 raised to the 1 third power. So either one of these would be acceptable for your answer. You could even solve out the cube root of 64 if you'd like. The cube root of 64, if you use prime factorization, is just 4. So that's how you rewrite rational exponents using these generic rules that we've got. 